All right, now if you wanna play fantastic golf, there's really only three shots that you need to have. Three go-to shots, no matter what your swing is, what you're doing, if you can hit these three shots, you can put up a pretty daggone good score. Now, if you're joining me on YouTube, be sure to click that subscribe button. I have got tons of great videos coming out for you this year. I don't want you to miss out. And the only way you're gonna get notified when we release that new content is if you're subscribed. Also, click that thumbs up. That really helps us out. And post your comment below. I'd love to hear from you. The first one is gonna be the shot that gets you compression when you hit the golf ball. Whether you're hitting your iron shots, your driver, it really works for any club in the bag. You wanna have that ball compressed. Now, if I'm not compressing the ball, let's imagine that I'm flipping the club like I see the majority of players do. So when I say flipping it, I mean that the, the wrists are kind of behind the, the golf ball at impact. The shaft, instead of leaning forward, is actually leaning back, and that adds tons of loft to this club head. Pros are taking about 30% of the loft off the club head at contact by leaning the shaft forward, where I see a lot of players even have a shaft backwards at contact. Now, if I do that, if I have that backwards club shaft, let me try to go ahead and hit one here doing that, and we'll see when I flipped that, I felt like I swung really hard. The ball you know, didn't really have a lot on it, and it's well short of the green there. It's also, I felt like I almost hit that ball really thin, even though I brushed the grass when I did that. So if I feel like I try to hit a little bit more ground, I end up chunking it. If I feel like I tried, if I hit a couple in the ground, I feel like I try to hit a little thinner, I end up thinning it and it shoots across the green. There's just no margin for error. So the solution to that is what I would think of and what I would call the low trap draw. So basically what we're trying to do here is we're gonna hit a low penetrating draw shot where we have a lot of forward shaft lean, we really compress that golf ball. Now when we take that loft off, like I'm gonna show you here, what's gonna happen is that ball is gonna pick up a lot more speed. So if I swing, let's say 50 miles an hour, just to keep the math easy, if I swing 50 miles an hour, the ball is gonna leave the club, head, the club head at 75 miles an hour versus if I'm flipping and I swing 50 miles an hour, the ball is gonna leave the club head at 55 miles an hour. So I can pick up some extra distance, some extra speed by leaning that club face forward, almost like using a sledgehammer type approach where we're taking the loft off and sledgehammering this golf ball, it's really gonna take off there. Because I'm hitting it solid, it's still gonna have plenty of spin too, so you don't have to worry about that ball rolling out as much. Here's the way we're gonna do that. Let me go over the number one misconception. And actually, let me hit one nice and solid first. So you'll see here, shaft leaning forward, my body's leading the way, and now I can really compress that ball. I'm gonna hit, try to hit a lower draw into this flag here. There we go, and you could hear the difference in the sound. That one's on the right side of the green, just blocked it just a touch, but I swung really smooth, and it went a good 30 to 40 yards farther where it landed than the ball that I hit before that, where I felt like I put out a ton of energy and it just sounded a lot crisp, felt better, everything was better about it. So how are we gonna do this? Well, the biggest misconception is that we're hitting this way. We actually don't move the club this way in relationship to our body. Here's what I mean by that. If I'm standing up and my hips are facing this golf ball, so my hips are straight ahead, I'm visualizing, a lot of players visualize in their mind that my hips and my body are facing the ball and I'm moving this club across my body toward the target. That's really not what's going on. I'm actually moving the club this way. I'm moving the club at 30 to 45 degrees out to the right when I swing. What happens is as I open up my body, watch what happens to that club now. That all of a sudden, that 45 degrees to the right is pretty square. So my belt buckle is open. My club is swinging this way. So if I kind of put my arm, this is the direction my club's swinging, this is the direction my belt buckle's facing. Let me turn my belt buckle now back toward the target and you'll see that angle is actually here. Right, so the golf swing at contact is this swing. And I use my body to square that up. I use the momentum of my body to carry that through. A lot of players have the idea that the golf swing is this way, body facing the ball there. And if I open up my body, all of a sudden I'm over the top, I'm flipping it, I'm coming out of my posture. A lot of bad things are gonna happen. So here's the drill, very, very easy. We're gonna start out here with some very small swings. And I want you to trust me for a minute. Here's a cool thing you can do. Turn off all your pre preconceived ideas. Pretend like you've never played golf before, and I'm gonna give you about 20 to 30 shots here to hit, and if these work, then go ahead and do them. You're gonna be hitting it fantastic. You're gonna have that go-to, what I call the trap draw, or the really, really solid shot that's gonna get you lots of speed. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to what you were doing before and say, hey, Clay didn't know what he was talking about. That didn't work for me. I didn't really compress it. So let's talk about it here. Let's jump right into it. 
The first one I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna have that swing where I go 45 degrees out to the right. And you're gonna take a middle iron, here I have an eight iron. You can have six iron, seven iron, eight iron, anywhere around in there is fine. And I'm gonna just put this ball a little bit back in my stance so that now I can actually have some room to swing out to the right. And I'm purposely gonna make a swing that goes out to the right about 45 degrees. Now most players don't open up their hips enough, so this is a good way to feel without opening your hips, how your club will be swinging. So that's your first couple of swings, just way out there to the right. Just shoot them over there, off the driving range, into the water, I'm over going toward the pond today. Doesn't matter, do about five or six of those until you feel pretty comfortable with that. Now here's the second piece of that. As I start to make some more of those swings, I'm gonna let my hands roll over. Here's the motion with the, the left wrist. We're gonna bow the left wrist, so the palm of my hand comes back toward my body, I'm gonna put it down like I'm holding a golf club and then we're doing this, almost like we're throwing a Frisbee, right? My palms toward the sky and I'm moving this way. If I did that with a golf club, look what happens. I bow my wrist to get all the forward shaft lean. And then as I come down in my posture, I release that club and that allows the face to turn on over. So the face goes from the inside and it rotates to turn on over. That's what's gonna get that ball to draw back to the left. If you don't like your left hand, that's completely fine. We'll do it with the right hand. My right knuckles come back to my elbow. My palm is toward the ball. And then from there, I'm gonna be turning my hand this way. Again, if I added that to my right hand, that's gonna be this type motion where I'm letting that club really release around. Almost like if I had my hand on a tabletop and I'm just brushing my hand back and forth on a tabletop like that. I'm really gonna be hitting that hook. If you play tennis, it's kind of like an inside out top spin forehand. You're really gonna be letting that roll on over. So again, five or 10 more shots. It's as easy as that. Don't worry about hitting anything full. We're hitting 30 or 40 yards here. Swing out to the right and really letting that roll on over until that ball really starts to draw, just like that. So now I got that ball to draw back in, kind of landed on the left side of the fairway. So we're gonna do five or six of those until we get that ball. It's gonna be low because we, we have that forward shaft lean. It's gonna start to the right because we're swinging to the right and our face is a little bit open. And then it's gonna roll and close that face coming through contact to get it to draw back. So the ball's gonna come over like this. I'll hit one more here, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit a little more ground while I'm doing this so you can really hear the compression of this. There we go, that nice slinging kind of draw. Now, in the real swing, we're gonna have a little bit of that same feeling, just to a smaller degree. What's gonna happen when you really swing is that now when my hips go ahead and open back up, and I'm gonna, on these next swings, allow my body to open back up. And when I have that sensation of swinging out to the right, that's actually gonna be straight now. And when I have that sensation of releasing the club face, I'm just gonna do a little less of that. I'm not gonna do quite as much of this type of motion. It's gonna be a little straighter as I'm doing that, and it's gonna draw instead of hook. So here, the only difference is, set up to the golf ball, and imagine as you're at contact, everything is opened up. So my hips, my shirt buttons, my chest, my head, everything is really feeling like it's coming toward the target. And then I'm doing that same motion. Now as I swing to the right, it's going toward the target as I release it. And you're gonna have a little bit of a draw on there. If you overdraw it and you start to hook it, just do a little bit less. So now, watch this one. You're gonna hear that compression. We're gonna have that low trap draw. There, I hit that one great. Hit it hard so it even got up in the air because it just hit so hard. And I flew that all the way to the back of the green with what I felt like wasn't a very hard swing. The reason is I really compressed that golf ball. It jumped off the face and you could really hear a difference in that sound. That's a low trap draw. If you can get that one down, you can play golf and beat a lot of players that are bigger and stronger than you and keep up with them because your ball speed is gonna be so high. So now that we can absolutely smoke the ball and outdrive our buddies, hit better iron shots than our buddies, now we need to have that shot that's under the gun gonna hold up. And that's what I call the pressure beater. This is a little half backswing, full follow through. And what it does is it takes your hands and your rhythm and your timing out of it. It makes things a lot more consistent. Now I will warn you, this isn't gonna be your full power shot. You're gonna give up a little bit of distance, but as long as you're hitting the ball solid, this can be the one that is your go-to shot when the pressure is really on. You can always take one more club into the green, swing an extra club and just make sure that you hit it nice and solid and flush, get it on the green. So here's the way we do this. And, and the opposite or what we're trying to get away from is a swing where my body stops and locks up and I have to use all hands and arms to push the club through there. 
That is not good. The majority of people I see when the pressure gets on, the legs, the hips, the body doesn't want to move. You think, oh no, I got to stay facing this golf ball. I don't want to turn away from it or I'm going to completely chunk it or thin it or do something bad. So the body locks up tighter than a brick. And now all of a sudden, all you got left is your arms to try to sla slap at the ball, swipe at the ball. And all of a sudden it's a short, kind of fast, compact swing. Doesn't really have the speed. And that one went over, just barely almost got into the bunker, a little bit short of the green. We end up with a bad result. The real key here is to make sure that we use our body. We're gonna make a little short backswing on this one. I'm only gonna feel like, and again, our backswing will go a little longer than this, but I'm only gonna feel like, I'll take my hand to here, about waist high. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and let my hips rotate. I'm gonna go ahead and let my shoulders rotate. That's important for speed. I don't wanna lock up my shoulders again. Everything has to rotate in the backswing. I'm just making a shorter backswing. So notice how my shoulders are still turning. But from here, I'm gonna really accelerate on through and I'm gonna focus on three things in my finish. Number one, belt buckle toward the target. So I'm really letting my right foot rotate around to allow that to happen. My belt buckle is gonna to be toward the target. Number two, my chest is nice and high. I don't wanna do this. Again, if I lock up my body, all arms, and I finish here. Chest down, belt buckle down. That's no good. You're gonna be hitting it all over the place if you do that. I wanna finish belt buckle toward the target, chest nice and high. And then number three, I'm gonna feel like my hands get all the way around to as far behind my head as I can. So I'm making sure that again that I finish that swing and everything goes all the way to that good full finish. Again, if I do that the wrong way, lock up the body, take over with the arms. Now all of a sudden my hands stop short, belt buckle down, chest down, and I thin that ball, terrible shot, could have gone anywhere. So you gotta really focus on that full finish. Let me grab a couple golf balls here and I'll demonstrate a couple for you. So again, it's a half back swing, but I'm still using my body. Good shoulder turn on the back swing there. And then I'm really coming through to that good full finish with those three key checkpoints. So it's gonna go a little shorter than my normal one, but you'll see if I hit this solid, it's not gonna be that much shorter. And I absolutely flush that one about as good as I can hit it just right of the flag. I hit that one so solid, it actually went a little longer than most of my swings I was making before. It went all the way to the back of the green. Um, pretty, pretty daggone good for an eight iron, even though I had a, what felt like a shorter swing. Now, one thing you may notice is when I did that, I may have felt like I stopped here, but my hands actually went a little farther back. That's okay. The big key here, and this is where I, players that try this out and don't do well, what they're mistaking is a shorter arm swing for no shoulder turn. I don't want you to do this. And I didn't turn my shoulders and I just picked the club up. That's a recipe for disaster because what did I do? I turned off my body and I used all arms. I want you to take that good shoulder turn and then shoulder turn all the way on through to a good full finish. So I'm really using my shoulders and my body to guide the swing, the big muscle groups, to take a little bit of that pressure away from my hands and arms. Again, good shoulder turn, half back swing, then I'm gonna make a good full finish. Again, a nice solid one, just barely right of the flag. Those are almost going farther because I'm hitting those so crisp and so solid. All right, so I've got a secret for you. To play a great round of golf, you actually don't have to make any putts or you don't have to worry about making any putts. Really all you have to do is hit the ball with the correct speed. A certain number of those putts are gonna go in and the ones that don't go in, they're gonna be an easy tap in. So you're gonna eliminate your three putts and you're still gonna make your fair share of putts just by having the right speed. Let me go over a few things on this. Number one, let's talk about speed versus line. I have a piece of paper. You don't actually have to put a piece of paper there, but be visualizing a piece of paper which represents the back edge of the cup to about a foot past, roughly a foot past. Anywhere in that general ballpark is really good. Now, that's where I'm aiming and it will get to where I'm trying to hit it with this speed. But first, let's talk about how much more important the speed is versus the line. Now, I can hit a putt pretty firm and now all of a sudden I lip out. That's actually not a very good example because that slowed the cup slowed it down. But let me actually hit out to the right and I hit one pretty firm, firmer than I wanted to. And now all of a sudden I've left myself with a three foot putt, a tricky three foot putt. The, the tee actually slowed it down. It could have been a four foot putt. How many times have you rolled a ball four feet past the cup and now all of a sudden you're left with a tricky downhill putt, a breaking putt or something like that that really makes your knees shake and you're gonna miss those. You're gonna miss a certain number of those. The pros, the best players in the world are gonna miss a decent number of four footers coming back. There's just no way around that. 
That's pretty common, that happens a lot. How many times do you set up to a putt with perfect speed and miss it four feet to the right? Very, very rare. I felt like I shoved that one a mile and I probably only missed it two, two and a half feet to the right. Not very common. What that means is pretty much anybody can roll the ball so it's pretty close to being on line. I'm not gonna shove the ball three, four feet to the right on most cases, unless it's a really long putt. I'm not gonna pull the ball three or four feet to the left. I'm pretty much gonna hit it on the straight line, even if I'm not that good, good of a putter. Where the difference comes in is how well I control my speed. If I can roll this putt and I can get it to stop within a couple foot radius of that hole, I'm gonna make a lot of putts and I'm gonna tap in a lot of pars, tap in a lot of bogeys on the easy holes. And maybe if I chip well, I can even tap in a few birdies on the par fives. Here's how we do this. It's great to know that's what we're supposed to do. Now we have to have a game plan to actually make that happen. Number one, and the biggest key here, is I wanna have the proper aim. I wanna have the proper expectation when I'm doing this. Again, I'm imagining in my mind a piece of paper right behind the hole, and I'm trying to get my ball to stop on that piece of paper every single time. If I hit one and it goes in, but it would have been four or five feet past that piece of paper, I'm happy that I made it, but I'm a little bit disappointed that I had the wrong speed. Vice versa, if I push it and I lip out, I miss it to the right, and I'm 10 feet away, I'm not upset that I missed that putt. I'm happy if it ends up right around where that piece of paper was because I did a good stroke, I'm just gonna miss a certain number of those. From 10 feet, you're just not gonna make that many putts, but I can put a good speed and a decent roll on it. So that's the intention, that's piece number one. Piece number two, notice my lower body is completely still. I've watched almost every single professional golfer in the world video footage of them putting, and none of them move around with the lower body. Every single one of them kept their lower body pretty still and pretty stable throughout the putting stroke. Here's a trick to get that to happen. Feel the pressure in both of your feet. If I can feel there's a 50-50 balance in both my feet, if I start to sway, I wanna feel this pressure move in my feet. All of a sudden I feel more in my right foot, I feel more in my left foot. I'm gonna to try to keep that 50-50 balance or that pressure exactly equal in my feet as I putt. I'm not gonna worry about anything like keeping still, any of that. All I'm gonna do is try to keep that pressure nice and even, and that's what's gonna keep me stable. Then I'm gonna visualize rolling to that sheet of paper. Now I happen to have made both those putts. That's great, I'm gonna miss some. I'm never gonna get to where I can make all my 12, 13 footers like I have here. But what I liked about those is even though they went in, they still had the good speed on them. If I did miss those, it'd be a really easy tap in. So keep those feet stable. The second piece here, and I actually grab both these balls before we go on any farther. I like to visualize letting that ball roll out of my hand. Now everybody's gonna be a little bit different. You can try this out if it works well for you. Fantastic. If it doesn't work well for you, you can always focus on something a little bit different. But what I like to visualize here, keeping my stable balance, and then from here, I'm visualizing the, the palm of my hand is just going to roll that ball almost like I'm just taking a ball and I'm just rolling it to the cup. Right? I'm not doing anything any fancier than that. So that's the way I like to visualize it. And what I like to do, thirdly, after I roll that ball, I like to keep my head locked in the same area, not to move my head at all until that ball is completely rolled out of my sight. I know if I can do that, I'm gonna hit some pretty good ones. So those are the three keys for me, or the, the four keys. Number one, have the correct intention. All I'm worried about is the speed. If they go in, great. If I miss them, completely fine as long as my speed is good. Number two, nice and stable. I'm not letting my feet move at all. Nice and balanced as I'm rolling all these. Number three, I'm rolling the ball like I'm tossing it with my right hand. And then finally, I'm keeping my eyes locked. They don't have to be focused on a particular spot. That's one mistake people make. They get locked in on a blade of grass or a dot or something like that. I don't think it's, it's, it has to be like that. I just kind of have a gaze or it's almost like I'm underwater, like it's grayed out. I'm not really focused on anything. I'm not not focused on anything. I'm just keeping my eyes pretty steady and I'm letting that ball roll out of my sight before I look up. If you can do those things, I promise you, you're gonna putt well enough to have some good scores. Now, I don't wanna stop here. One of the big keys that we went over in this video is making sure that we get a big shoulder turn. It doesn't matter if I swing out to the right and release the club to get that trap draw, or I make my little half back swing and really good full finish. If I don't turn my shoulders, I'm gonna have absolutely zero power in any of those shots. That's what I call the power turn in our top speed golf system. Once I take that swing and I really get my chest and I load my hips and my feet in the proper way, which is actually a specific way that you need to load your hips and feet to make this happen. Once I learn how to do that, my body frees up. Even if I'm tight and inflexible, I can still make this good turn and you have tons of power. 
I'm gonna play a preview of one of my best power turn videos. It's gonna go over how to load up those shoulders and it's gonna make a world of difference. Let's go ahead and get started. But with the correct technique, we can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So we don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power, and we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn, if not more than that. I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos, and I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now here, we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're gonna see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees. 